Hi, welcome to the Spring 2017 Raven AccuBoom Sectional Control Webinar. I'm going to go over a couple settings for the Raven AccuBoom system. All right, just a quick overview of AccuBoom if you guys are curious on what it is. AccuBoom is Raven's automatic sectional control. Uh, the basic requirements that are needed for AccuBoom, it will need a Raven field computer because we do need a coverage map and GPS to operate Basically, the current ones that are used for AccuBoom will be the Cruiser 2 console, the Invisio Pro 1 and 2, Viper Pro console, and the Viper 4. We can also pair the field computer with a SES console if you currently have one that's doing your product control. So that would be any of the SES consoles like the 440, 450, or the 4 and 5000 console series. We'll get into that a little bit later. And basically, the standard AccuBoom node that you'll see in the field will be the what we call the 316 AccuBoom node. Okay, we're going to look into the main AccuBoom settings that you'll be tweaking when you're setting up your AccuBoom system for the first time or making field changes. Um, the on look ahead time will be basically how far the field computer is looking ahead from the current GPS location, whether you're going into a previously applied area or unapplied area. When setting up for the first time, a good starting point would be one and a half to two seconds. Um, one of the things that you'll want to take in consideration will be your driving speed that you're approaching these areas. The faster you're traveling, you're going to want a lower time based on your covering more distance quickly. And if you're driving slower, say you're in a self-propelled sprayer, you'll be driving faster than, say, a pull-type. Pull-type guys will have a larger look-ahead time based on slower speeds. Also, guys running Viper 4 consoles, if you have the 2.0 or higher software, we can actually take in consideration look-ahead distance if you'd prefer to use that over seconds. Next, we'll be taking a look at the off look-ahead. So basically, this will be used for when you're approaching the previously applied area when it wants to shut the sections off. This will be a lower setting use. Typically, a good starting point would be zero to half a second. Basically, we want to keep from getting any kind of skips in the field, but we won't also do not want to overlap as much, so that will be a fine, delicate tuning. The next main setting that will be more than likely tweaked would be the turnoff percentage. This takes in consideration the percent of boom that is in a previously applied area before it will turn the section off. As you see, the default section usually starts at 85%. But when left at that, it, there is a potential it will leave a gap. So if you want to ensure that there are no gaps, you would more than likely run a 99 or 100% turnoff percentage, which is perfectly fine. The next main setting that will be used would be the on override time. This is a time in seconds that can be programmed and changed. This is a good tool to use for when you're starting off in the corner, when you're starting from zero. This will force that boom on. So you can get the boom filled up with spray pressure, and then you can get your spray pattern starting for when you take off in the corner. Once the time has expired, then it'll look to see, do I need to stay on or off based on are you in a previously applied area or did you stop? Another setting that is only seen on the Invisio Pro and Viper Pro consoles is the aggressiveness factor. This is basically a multiplication of the actual turn on and off look aheads. As you can see in the table here, you can adjust that according to operator preference. Just noting that the very high will favor the section to stay on versus off in certain situations. One of those situations that it applies for is when you're making a sharp turn in the field. If your boom will start to swing back into a previously applied area based on its mapping, and this will turn the section off and it can flicker on and off. In those situations, you will want to choose the high or very high aggressiveness factor. A couple of other settings that can be used would be the zero speed override. This will basically add a pop-up to the screen when you hit a zero speed. This can be handy if you do a lot of start stops or have a lot of corners that you're starting from in the field and you do not want to go into the settings to turn on the override. Another setting that can be used for the granular applications and guys using RX maps is a zero rate shutoff. This will basically turn your AccuBoom section off if any of the zones have a zero value in them. 
getting back to the SAS console running with AccuBoom, for the guys running an SAS console for product control wishing to control their sections, we do have a few machine kits for those. The only difference with these is we will run the machine switches in the off position when we are serially connected. The only difference between that, the CAN systems, we do run the boom switches in the on position, which does allow the operator to manually override those sections. And then as you see, the serial consoles that are capable would be any 400 or 600 series, so the Raven 440, 450, 460 consoles, and the 660. Then the Raven CAN consoles that are also able to be used would be like the 4400, 4600, and 4000 and the 5000 console. Other options that Raven has that do have built-in AccuBoom that would be the Raven Switch Pro. This is a very handy product. It does come with built-in product control along with the boom speed node. We are able to control the sections with the actual Switch Pro box. It does have a three position switch so we can force them on, force them off, or let AccuBoom take over. Very similar would be the CAN switch box that does not have AccuBoom built into it, but the AccuBoom node is built into the product nodes, or if you are running just a regular single product node, they can be used with a Raven AccuBoom node, the 316 ones that we talked about earlier. That one also does have the 10 boom switch capability, but it also does offer a neat feature that you can control the products on, off, and manual with the actual Raven CAN switch box. There are a few basic modes of operation with Raven AccuBoom. With the Invisio Pro and Viper Pro, we can change how we start AccuBoom when we start a job. There's basic AccuBoom we can do, and then there's more advanced features if guys want to do a field boundary or zone maps for their field. We're going to talk about those on the next slide. As you can see on the slide here, for guys running Invisio Pro 1 or 2, when we start a job, we do have the AccuBoom section you see there. We want to make sure that that is set to Enabled which you see it takes you to the next screen here where we want to make sure AccuBoom is enabled and for the guys that want to run more advanced features you will want to put a check mark in the create zone map which will take you to the next screen there which you can either create a new one or if you have any previous field boundaries or zone maps created you can load those here. And On the bottom part of the slide if you want to access Raven AccuBoom on the Invisio Pro console and also would apply partially for the Cruiser 2 from the main screen with the three large buttons, you'll go into the blue tools menu, into product control on the top left, AccuBoom tab, and then there you can see on the bottom right, that's where you would adjust all the previous settings that we talked about earlier. All right, guys running AccuBoom with the Viper Pro console. This one has a little more steps to set up. Basically, when you start on the menu, start job, new job will take you to the first picture there on the top left. We want to always make sure we got a green check on AccuBoom control if we're going to use AccuBoom, which will take us to the next screen. We want to make sure standard AccuBoom is checked, and if you want to do more advanced features, put the appropriate check mark below before we advance to the next screen when you set up the job. And then depending on software version on the Viper Pro is where we'll want to access the AccuBoom settings. As you can see on the bottom left there, the older versions had the boom icons down on the bottom, which we would push to get to the AccuBoom settings. In the newer versions, it is on the top part of the run screen. Once you select the boom section settings there, it will take you to the AccuBoom control setup, as you see on the next page, where we will do all our tuning. And if you go to the next screen on that page, this is a very important function if you are running into issues of AccuBoom not controlling certain sections, we want to make sure that they are checked in this screen. This is where we will set up which sections for that product AccuBoom will control. If you go to the next page here, that'll be where we set up the AccuBoom aggressiveness factor. You want to make sure that that is set up to your liking. All right, guys running AccuBoom with the Viper 4 console. This one is a little easier to set up. From your main administrator run tab, you'll have the three gears with the node. We will access AccuBoom on the first page of the settings. Once you go into AccuBoom settings, there's one page that will basically set up all the AccuBoom settings for our tuning. And on the bottom page, you can see that we do have the AccuBoom widget that can be added to the job screen. If you want to run an override, we will want that set up in the screen, and then we can press that widget while in the job, and then we'll force the AccuBoom override on. 
Something new we added with the Viper 4 consoles, this is with the current release software of 2.5 and will go beyond. We added a corrective coverage. Uh, the corrective coverage basically was added to keep the painting on for the duration of your off and on look ahead times running into previously applied areas. One thing with the computer is once the AccuBoom has been told to shut off by the Viper 4, it stops painting immediately on the screen, which can show a gap, but it may not be physically leaving a gap. Because as you know, the boom valves, when they close, that takes some time from when it gets its signal and for the sprayer to deplete the boom valve and the boom lines. So that's basically what we're covering up for, but the corrective coverage adds that so we're not leaving any gaps on the screen, even though we may not be physically leaving a gap in the field. This can be turned on or off in the AccuBoom settings as shown on the previous slide. If you put a check in the corrective coverage, you can enable or disable it. One other area we have sectional control, which isn't going to be called AccuBoom, but in the ISO side with the Viper 4 console only, we can also do sectional control. It will need a unlock required to unlock that in the task controller. One of the things that it's useful for is the guys running the Hawkeye nozzle control. It will be required to have the ISO sectional unlock. And also if you are running a any sort of Raven ISO product control node or the new Raven RCM, you can unlock section control capability with just an unlock into the Viper 4 console. One other node that is being used by Raven on mainly Agco machines we call the AccuBoom combo node. This does create a little confusion. There is a combo node setting in the AccuBoom settings for both Invisio Pro and Viper Pro. This is only checked for running the Agco machines as you see on the screen. Basically how this one works is the AccuBoom sends out the signal to the boom valve and the boom valve has a signal wire that gets sent back to the boom speed node. And when the field computer receives that signal, it will start the painting on the screen. So the big question is, when do I need to check that? Only the Agco machines, and if you're running a AccuBoom combo node, as you see with the part number ending in 714. And lastly, the AccuBoom remote can be used. As you see here, the regular 316 AccuBoom node must be a Rev C or higher. And if you're running a combo node and Rev A, also it does work with the level 2 or level 3 product controller nodes that have AccuBoom capabilities that can be unlocked. With the AccuBoom remote, this can be used to test the machine and if you want to use the capability of checking your sections out without sitting in the machine or having an operator. One of the key issues with the AccuBoom remote is any kind of unwanted signal since it is just remote sending a radio signal it can be easily disrupted. For best operation make sure that the air conditioning is turned off. Usually works best with just the key on engine off and if you have a two-way radio make sure that is turned off as well. One thing to check too if the AccuBoom node is receiving the signal will have a diagnostic two light that will illuminate anytime it receives the signal from the remote. One thing to make sure too is a lot of machines put their AccuBoom nodes inside a metal box which will not allow the signal to penetrate through and it may not receive it. So if that is so, um, some manufacturers as you see case did have a relocation kit. If you are inside a box, if that's a metal case that you can remove that might be necessary for a function of the AccuBoom remote.